Lawrence Pintak, can you comment on that point? Because the web is not neutral, is it? How much is it influenced by, by large corporations and invested interests, and how wary do we have to be of that? Well, certainly large corporations can influence the web just like large corporations used to send out video news releases to mainstream TV channels. But then you have all the people like Marwa who are out there emphatically not representing big business. All those new voices that are out there who are undermining, you might say, the big businesses, who are undermining the politicians. We just saw in the U.S. the power of the bloggers, for good or ill, to unseat a presidential but nominee. So, so how those far does bloggers, that power extend? Marwa, Marwa, if you can answer this, how yeah. easy is it for, for the government there to imprison bloggers? It's, uh, it's not as easy as it sounds. They, they, those bloggers who have been imprisoned, they, they, they really went overboard with things. It, there's a difference between saying your opinion and there's a difference between attacking somebody else. I've been blogging for like three or four years now and I've had some kind of ag aggressive opinions. And I know other bloggers like for example Wael Abbas of Mr. Digital. And, and he has all the torture videos and, and very angry posts. But there is a limit, there is a line. As long as you're being um, constructive, as long as you have your sources, as long as you're documented, it is not as easy. Lawrence Pintak, countries where broadcasting and publishing media is state controlled, well, those governments can just as easily censor the internet, can't they, by blocking access to certain websites and monitoring which websites people go to in order to track them down, find them, possibly arrest them. They can track them, they can make people register at internet cafes, that sort of thing. But it's not just as easy to block a website. As Mr. Ito was pointing out, there are lots of ways around that. They can block it, but people find other ways. Lots of software out there, lots of techniques out there. But Joy Ito, can, are, can, can their... governments manipulate search results? Well, there are, the, governments can manipulate um, filtering more than they can manipulate the search results. I think most of the search result manipulation will have to be by putting pressure on the search engines, although there are some sophisticated technologies. But at the end of the day also, for instance, most of the images coming out of, um, out of Burma during the, um, the crackdown on the monks, that's what we call the sneaker net. These are little memory cards with people running around. And so although the Internet's a very important part for the publishing, there are lots and lots of layers of stuff that goes on, and the Internet is used to coordinate this. But it, but you have to also understand there's a huge uprising of a social structure that um, is able to route around a lot of this um, uh, technology that the governments are putting in place. So Marwa, does, does state repression of media, television, information in general encourage more people to, to embrace the Internet? Yes, that is very true. Whether they're just people who want to gather information or whether they are journalists who cannot find a way. A lot of the bloggers online were journalists who were refused by mainstream media. I can name like uh, San Monkey, he, he wanted to be a journalist and then he was refused. Uh, Wael Abbas, he is a journalist, but then again he had to go to blogging because he didn't want the censorship and the monitoring. There are a lot of people who have a lot to say and when the mainstream media shut down in front of them, they just had to find an alternative. A lot of people with a lot of things to say, but Lawrence Pintak, we touched on this point before about the digital divide. There are a great many people in the world uh, who are disenfranchised, who aren't able to express their opinion, who don't have access to the web. Absolutely. And, you know, that's a bad thing, but the more the web gets out there, the more internet penetration increases, the more access they're going to have. Governments have their fingers in a dam. They're trying to stop the flow of information. We're on Al Jazeera. It's an example of the change in the flow of information. The internet is another example of that. It just keeps coming. They can't ultimately stop it. Well, with that in mind, Joy Ito, is it only a matter of time before the great firewall of China is torn down? <laughs> well, I, it's hard to predict when and how this is going to happen, um, but I think it's a matter of time. Um, it, again, it, it, it's, an arm, it's a losing arms race, and it depends on how long they're willing to continue to invest and how long they're willing to uh, stunt the growth of certain um, aspects of but the society. But can this sort of censorship be prevented? I'm sorry? Can this sort of censorship be prevented? Well, so, for instance, we, in many of the um, sort of, um, citizen journalist circles, we're creating lots of tools and creating lots of guides to allow people to um, circumvent this stuff. And it's always easier to pr produce technology to circumvent this kind of censorship than it is to implement it. So, again, it's, it, I think it's a financial uh, uh, war rather than um, 
one that's so where do you think we're going to be in the next 20 years how will the web change in terms of, of user experience um, I think mostly it's going to move um, dramatically to mobile. Um, in Japan, more than half of the people use um, mobile for the internet access, and I think that the digital divide will um, definitely be uh, a lot less of an uh, of an issue. And um, and I think that the the world will become much more internationalized um, rather than the primary English. I think one of the biggest um, issues that I have right now is that, for instance, there's very little Arabic content on the on the net because we just haven't yet. Uh, uh, seen it grow. Obviously, it's coming, but I think it's not yet nearly as international as it could be. Lawrence Pintak, what's your take on that? How do you think the, the evolution of this technology is going to affect the world? I think we will become much more intertwined, which is a wonderful thing. The fact that all of those polarization issues we've had over the last few years between the West and the Arab world, etc., the Internet is helping, helping, not completely doing it, but helping to break that down. But I come back to the issue of being able to separate what is journalism and what is opinion. And that's a, that's a very important issue as we move forward. Marwa Raha, what are your thoughts on that? I think that the Internet has done a great job on bringing like, the exchange of opinions, like hearing the other. Like, um, I'm, now I'm 34, but like 20 years ago, every time I would hear Israel or any Israeli person mentioned, I wouldn't even think of hearing that person out. Now I follow Israeli blogs and bloggers and I understand where they come from. So, so this has brought people to understand the other and to like sort of, in a way, try to accept the other. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for joining us, our guest, Joy Ito in Doha, CEO of Creative Commons, Marwa Raha in Cairo, a writer, presenter and blogger, and Lawrence Pintak in Cairo, director of the Adam Center for Journalism at the American University. And thank you so much for joining us here on this edition of Inside Story. We welcome your comments and suggestions. Please email them to us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. Bye for now.